I would like to welcome you to my program for the year 2021. This is our first broadcast. And beloved, what a year it has been since 2020 that just gone behind us, but has not left us. But God has been gracious to us. God has been good. God has been wonderful to us. And He has sustained. And also we've seen our loved ones, some have passed away because of this crisis around us. We have seen fellowship reduced to almost nothing. We can no longer fellowship anymore. Visitation is completely out. The crisis around the world is just indescribable. I don't know who has not feel it, from the government to the ordinary person on the street, has feel it. And uh, but here we still are, by the grace of God, we are still standing. So. Hopefully, I'm trusting the Lord that this year, that this storm will come to pass. And I don't believe that God is going to allow us to continue with this crisis. But we, who are His children, who represent Him here on earth, have to cry unto Him. Because also for me, from what I've learned from this period, almost a year now, is what I'll be sharing with you in the course of... Uh, our discussions during the year, how God has sustained us and how God is, we keep putting our hope in God to take us through this crisis. And I believe it's going to encourage you and also you're going to, we're going to learn one or two things from each other, especially if you leave your comment at the bottom. It hasn't been easy at all. It's been tough on everyone from myself, our church members, to friends that I know around the world businesses, family crumbles, the whole society, everything is in a complete mess. And a lot of people asking questions, where is God in all these things? I see Christians had a feeling, even Christians are dying in a large number in this crisis. And people are now beginning to ask questions, where is God in all these? But I want to tell you, before you start asking those questions, take heart. Our God is still alive. If you are dealing with the same God that I'm dealing with, He has not changed. You see what is happening? And He's dealing with it in His own way. I will come to that. 2020 was a year we don't want to remember in our lives. But it's something we have gone through. So we cannot just put it at the back of the corner. It's something we will remember as long as we live. And my own experience for 2020 is that I look at it more spiritually and it gave me time to really get more closer to God. Because remember the Bible said that when the world is in crisis like this and the Lord said when I come we will have find faith in the world. Our faith will have to be tested. And for me, this was a time for us to sharpen our faith, to really see if we can handle what is to come. Like I said in one of my messages, this is not the end of this is not the end of it. In fact, this is the beginning. The, the, the worst is yet to come. If you look at what the scriptures predicted towards the, the days of the end of the world. So, but we need to prepare ourselves, we need to prepare our hearts. And it must be prepared to follow the principle and the guidance of the Lord. Because anything outside that is going to fail. That's the reason why you see the whole world right now is in total shamble. Nobody has any solutions. Even as they are developing the vaccine to counter this illness or these diseases that's all over the world, this thing is manifesting itself in another form, reproducing itself in another form or shapes. We started with the COVID-19, now they have 21, they have other numbers. So before the human can find solution to it, if science can develop solutions to it, it manifests itself too. And this has even completely closed out the other, other matters, other diseases that we know of. What about cancer? What about HIV? And I know a lot of friends who have died of cancer. I know, a lot, I know quite a, a, a AIDS, HIV has not stopped, it's still ravaging. But now, because of COVID, we don't even pay attention to that. To that, Diabetes, all these deadly diseases that is all over the place. That the world is still trying to find solutions to. And then come this one. 
And the question is, where is God in all this? But what I want to let you know is that, in regardless of what is happening around the world, God will always be God. He never change. You may not like it. You may not understand it. Why? Because God has made his soul. Because his ways is not our ways. He does his own thing when he wants to do it. He takes care of issues when he wants to take care of issues. But one thing we must learn as an individual, we need to ask ourselves, this crisis that is happening around the world, that is happening around us, should it bring us closer to him? Or should it distance us more from him? Remember, when crisis, where we live, when we are in crisis or we find ourselves in crisis, oftentimes it's because of the direct result of we being far away from him. Because the more we move far away from him, the more we begin to have the challenges of this life in our world. And when this crisis starts dealing with us, because we are so far away from him, it becomes so difficult for him to intervene because we are not close to him. It's like a son. If you have a son or a daughter who is not close to you or who decides to divorce you as a parent or decides to walk away into his own world, when that child is going through a world of crisis in his own life, and you as a father, as a mother, you are in a position to actually help, to uplift, take this person out of those crises. And this person has not given you the opportunity because he's so far away from you. What can you do? There's nothing you can do. You can only watch from a distance why he or she suffers the consequences of his actions. Same thing with our relationship with God. Because mankind have so walked far so far away from him, and we find ourselves in the situation that we are right now, with the COVID and all the crisis around the world, the economy, everything collapsing. And God is looking at us. How does he intervene? Because we have, man has so degenerated and walked so far away from his creator that God himself is shouting and calling. So, come back home. Come back home. And through his son, Jesus Christ, that came and laid down his life for us, pointed us to the Father. Come back home through him. But yet we don't see this. We have decided to abandon that calling and walk deep into darkness. So what do we do today? We see the consequences of that. God wants us to be closer to him. If we want him to manifest in our life in his fullness, we have to be close to him. We have to be closer to him because when a son is far away from the parents, there is absolutely nothing the parents can do when he finds himself in crisis. So I want us to use this opportunity to get to rediscover our purpose, why we are here on earth, why we were created. God created us not just for a purpose, but he created us to also have an independent of mind to be able to seek him and to be with him all, always, all the time. No parent, even with, no parents want these children to be far away from them. Same thing, God does not want us to be far away from him. But we have chosen to walk away from him. And when we find ourselves in crisis, and we start calling back onto him, and we don't even do it genuinely. We do it because we just want to be set free at that moment. It's a case like somebody tells you, I need help. Can you help me? You just say, oh, I can help you. But for me to help you, you need to do this, do this, do this, do this. Say, no, 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 don't tell me what to do. Just give me the help that I ask for. I can do whatever I want to do, or I know what I want to do. I don't think you'll be so easy to help that person. Or you know somebody who is an alcoholic. And you know, it's, it's not trying to walk away from his alcohol that gives him problem. But every time he comes to you, he wants to borrow money or what, he ask you for money or whatever. He says, no, let me go buy you groceries. No, no, no. Can you give me the money? He says, no, if I give you this money, I know you're going to, what you're going to use it for. He says, no, but if you want to help me, says, how do you help such person? You leave them alone. The same thing with God. When you walk away from God and you only call on him 
when you are in crisis and God looks at your heart because he sees the bottom levels of our heart, our mind, what we can do. And your coming back to him is not genuine. Simply because you just want to walk away from that crisis. He's going to allow you to continue until you are ready. And when you are ready to come back to him, he's going to open the door with his open arms to receive you back. And he knows. That's the reason sometimes we think we can twist the arm of God. We can twist his mind. But he knows the heart of every one of us. That's the reason why when we want to follow Christ, we must follow him with a genuine heart. We must come to him with an open heart and say, Lord, I have walked away from you. But right now, I need to come back to you so that you can straighten me up and help me to live the life that is worthy and acceptable unto you as you have created it to be from the beginning. When we do that, the Lord will open his arm to receive us back in. Beloved, there is no way for me to tell you today that with a magic wand that this thing is going to go away. It will go away. I believe that. But this is not the end of it. There's still going to be more issues, more problems, more crises. And we are still going to constantly need the Lord to take us through it. If not, we are just going to die like everyone out there without Christ. And the Bible talks about eternal death is the worst death that can happen to any man. So, if you're still alive, you're listening to this broadcast. God has sustained you to be listening to this program today for a reason. And you must take heed and come back to where he wants you to be. I still believe the coronavirus was just not an accidental thing. Whether it was created by accident by man or Satan brought it directly from wherever he is, Whichever way, there is a lesson to be learned out of it. And one of the primary lessons is to know that we have gone far away from our Creator. And our Creator wants us to come back to Him through the Son, Jesus Christ. Because there is no other way to the Father except through Him. Secondly, it's a test of time also for those who are already in the faith to see where our heart is. Whether it's a heart, our heart is of this world or is our, whether our heart is of heaven. You see, it's these days people have become so religious that they bind their self, they bind their spirit, they bind their heart to the religion of the day. It's become fashionable to become a Christian. It's become fashionable to become a part of the religion, part of the movement. But the reality is that majority does not have that personal experience with Christ. So, when a trials like this comes on, or difficulties like this comes on, their faith is tested, they cannot hang in there. Why? Because they follow fashion. This is the in thing, they follow it. Very religious, they speak in tongues, they go to church every Sunday. They even fast and pray. But their heart is not with the Lord. Being with the Lord is committing your heart unto Him and doing everything from the heart. You see, one thing God told Israel, you seek me with your lips while your heart is far, far away. He said, what shall I do unto you, O Israel? Because thou hast seek me with thy lips and your heart not with me, I will leave you to your enemy until they have utterly destroyed you in the land that I'm going to give to you. That was God warning Israel, his first chosen bond. His first chosen one, we, only, we know in the Bible. But the same thing happened. Christianity is not about being religious, it's not about going to Christ. It's not just even accepting Christ, but it's about doing what the Lord has ascribed in His Word that we should do. And that is living in obedience according to His Word. You cannot claim to follow Christ while your heart is totally emblossomed in the world. Anything that has to do with the kingdom of God, it is secondary on you. But when it comes to the dependency of the world, of your career, of everything that you think that will make you successful in the world, that's perfect. 
One thing God does not want is that God does not want us to place him in the secondary position. He always wants us to be in the primary position in our lives. Career cannot take his place. Marriage, our marriage, cannot take his place. Children cannot take his place. As precious as they may be, our wealth, our success in this world cannot take his place. He must be first and foremost. And when he is first, everything else, your marriage, your career, your business, your children, your success, will be secondary. Because remember, he is the one that produces, he is the one that gives the things. But oftentimes we place this thing before him, and this thing becomes primary in our life. Replacing God, that's supposed to be primary, then we lose everything. And God said, no, I don't compete with no man. I know my position in the life of a man, and that's where I want to be. So until, for me, these are part of the lesson I have to learn through this lockdown. Knowing when to bring and how to bring in God as first and foremost before anything else in my life. And the Bible says when that is done, then you begin to take charge of all your worries, your trouble, your fear, your trials in this world, your temptation. You begin to take charge of it. That's the reason why you see he constantly was telling the children of Israel, if you obey my word, if you do according to my word, I will go ahead of you. I will fight your war. I will fight your battle. I will defeat your enemy. I will take the land of your enemy. I will give it to you. But no one thing, as you go, I am not going to wipe out every man, every, every enemy out of your way. I will leave a pocket of your enemy on the land to test your faith to test to see if you will put me first in your journey with me. God said this, not because he hated his people or he wanted his people to suffer, but because his hand upon them is so high and mighty that he wanted to show off to the world that these people, they are special to me and I am in charge of them. I govern their life. They live according to my word. That's just thing, what God wanted to do. Use them as a showpiece. And we know throughout the history of Israel, they failed woefully. And if you look at Christianity today that we walked in, it's the same thing. Jesus said, we shall seek what? The kingdom of God first and its righteousness before anything else starts to be added unto it. If we seek our earthly desires constantly above the kingdom of God, the loved is not going to work. The earlier we realize that religion is destructive, but experience and work with Christ is life given, the better our life will become as a Christian. You see, it's wonderful to know that this journey. It's not the way we've been told that once you are in Christ, everything will be smooth, right? No, it's not true. Life is not like that. God, when he was dealing with Abraham, he made a lot of promises to Abraham. And funny enough, these promises, a lot of them did not even come to pass while Abraham was alive. So many of them came to pass when he was already far gone into the grave. Some have to endure 20 years, some 13 years, some 6 years before God could even honor his word in his life. Beloved, we living in a crisis time. There's no, everybody knows. It, it, it's hitting home now. I will share more of my own personal life experience this past one year. It has affected my business so much that today, it's just the grace of God I'm standing here before you. And I believe a lot of you listening to this now, you've been through the same thing and you are wondering, where is God in all this? So for us, there is a long lesson for us to learn in this crisis way, to bring us closer to our maker because man has been so far away from him. And three, things is not going to be the way it used to be. If we 
are back in church, for instance, it's not going to be church as usual. Sing Hosanna, hallelujah, and that's it. God is good. It's going to be more of a personal relationship and a spirit with him that is going to be so vivid that the world will see and they'll say, of oh, indeed, these are Christians, the representative of heaven. That's the reason I believe the time we're going through right now is a time of sifting. God is sifting through things. Things cannot remain the way they used to be. And that's the reason why you see the kingdom of some preachers right now is being shaken. You see Christians, ordinary Christians, their life is being shaken. Why? God wants to sift out what is needed to be sifted out so they can produce the quality of his representative here on earth. And that can only happen if we allow him to sift us. And remember, when you are sifting, the residues that fall out, those are the ones that cannot withstand the weight of the shaking of the sifting. For you, when they dig gold on the ground, they just pick it up. They put it inside that conveyor belt. It came to where they sift, where you see that machine shaking it to get to where the gold is. The same thing I believe is happening in our Christian life today. God is working. God is sifting us. So you see preachers now, their heart, some of their heart is failing because they know they have built their kingdom on lies and lies and principles of lies. And today has been afforded before our eyes. So our coming back, when God allows things to simmer down, it's not going to be as usual as it used to be. Things are going to take a different turn. People are going to stand to declare what their faith is and we will see what they are talking about. God is not interested in one leg in here, one leg out, what I call in-between Christians. You stand on the fence, on the fence, you are outside, you are inside. We don't know where you belong. God is interested for those that can stand in his name and face the power of darkness in his name and overcome the world through his name. That's what God is looking for. That's what God is yearning for. God is not interested in multitude. God is interested those on those whose heart is after him. It's like us. I've got children. Some of you watching now, you have children. What do we expect from our children? We always want the best. Whether it's school or it's in their career or in a marriage, we want the best for them or from them. Any child that brings in disgrace to his family is always an outcast. Why don't we identify with that? Because nobody wants to identify with foolishness or failure or lack of integrity, for a better word. We all want to be recognized with something that is successful, something that is of integrity, and something that is of focused and of, des of a desirable element. That's the reason why we cannot hang out around people whose who are not desirable. Same with God. God cannot hang out with a sinner man there today, tomorrow is a righteous man. God wants to hang out with those whose hearts are with him. So beloved, as we walk into 2021, there's still a lot of dark cloud out there. But to them that walk in the faith and believe are the one that's going to overcome. To them that see the chapter that God is now are the one that's going to overcome. To them that can lay hold on the truth of the word of God, not the opinions of men or of what they think. They are the one that's going to see God. Because the kingdom principle is not about opinions. It's about absolute. Thus says the Lord, and thus it is established. It's not based on how we feel. It is about what we know of Him through faith, what He can do in our lives. So I want to encourage you that though there are dark days ahead, but always remember, behind every storm, there is a camp. And we have to dig through the storm. I don't know how long this thing is going to last, but one thing I do know, He that is in us is greater than He that is in the world. Whatever you're going through today, whatever I'm going through today is for a purpose. For us to learn and reshape our life and come back unto the Lord, knowing 
that we have been so far away from him. That he can reorganize our life. Though we have faulted, though we have failed, he will bring us back in alignment with him if we choose to. He will walk with us and we will see a better future. And especially eternity, that money cannot. I like what Bob Marley said to his children before he passed away. But when Bob Marley was dying, he said, he called all his children together and said, son, money cannot buy life. I've worked hard, I've tried it, I've seen it all. But one thing I do know, the wealth of this world cannot buy life. We must learn to come back to our maker, our creator. Because the days are getting closer that we wish I'd be meeting with it. So, beloved, Let's not get carried away with this word because this word has nothing to offer. But what we see today, empty, emptiness. Even the rich right now, they are crying because they see their money disappearing. And we've seen rich people died with these diseases. Anybody can affect anybody, rich or poor. Which is why the world has not found solution. So, I want to encourage you, as we go into 2021, let's look forward to a greater relationship to our maker. Let's come back home and let our life be restored in him, in his fullness, and refocus our energy in being with him rather than being outside of him. Beloved, I'll leave you with this. Take hold of what you have so that you don't lose it. And if you haven't had Christ, you need to get, lay hold of him and let him come into your life. It's going to make a lot of changes. Our fight is not about what we see. It's about what we cannot see. As long as you live in this world, you cannot win on your own. Because we're dealing with things we cannot see. Beloved, God bless you. I'm praying for you. And also you pray for me. We all need the strength of God. For those of you in faith, in the faith, we need to encourage one another. And if you are not in the faith, I encourage you to come to the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Without me, there is no other way. So, I don't, if you are in another religion, you say you were born this, you were in that religion, that religion. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, come to Christ so that He can what? Prepare you for your eternity. Thank you for listening. I hope you are blessed. If you are blessed, it's now we get involved with the things of the Lord. I'm not asking you to send me a Titan offering, but one thing I want to ask you to do, please share this video. As you share this video, you are also reaching out to people like I'm doing right now. I took my time to record this message to you, but you can just click that button and share it among your friends. Share it among your And you can discuss it further in your Bible study group. As a family, you can discuss it further what I've taught here. So let's continue to propagate the gospel in this format because right now we cannot meet in assembly as a church, but we can share the gospel far and beyond for the positive things that it will do in the life of others. So I urge you, I plead with you, share this video, subscribe to this video so that whenever we broadcast, you'll be the first to receive. I want to know what to promise you this year is watch out, I'm going to be releasing a lot of video not just on teaching, but also in business. How to set up a business, how to run business in crisis like this. I've got over 30 something years experience in this, in this field. So I have a lot to share with you, with a lot of testimony. So let's look forward to a great year of 2021. Don't look at what is happening now. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. God bless you. Until we meet again, take it easy. Keep praying. Hang on to your faith. Continue to believe. Don't let anything to deter you from following the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.